When it comes to analyzing characters and stories, there are a few things people love to do more than try and determine who's to blame for the events that transpired. And as I've said in many other videos, audiences can be very fickle and touchy in this regard. As if a character that's supposed to be quote-unquote good does something even slightly wrong, then they'll sometimes look on them very harshly for it. Or try to argue for why they are actually responsible for everything that happens afterwards. And Megamind is no exception to this. Because while it isn't many, there are some who've argued that it's actually Megamind and not Hal himself who's to blame for everything he does as Titan. And while there's no denying that Megamind is partially at fault for what happened, to say that he's directly, or even indirectly, responsible for Hal's atrocities is simply taking things too far, and borderline implying that Hal has no agency of his own. And today, I'd like to go over why exactly it is Hal, and Hal alone, who is responsible for his rampage through Metro City in the third act of Megamind. And for those of you who are new here, let me just take a moment to note that there will be spoilers ahead, so in case you don't want to know anything else that happens, you shouldn't proceed with this video. And please also note that this is only meant to be in good fun, and that nothing I say here should be applied to any real-life situations. Okay, so as I noted before, I'm not trying to argue that Megamind is completely free of blame when it comes to Hal Stewart's fall to villainy. After all, he couldn't see the obvious warning signs that Hal wasn't the best fit for a hero, even straight up ignoring Minion's advice on the matter. And after Hal tells him outright that he wants to be a villain instead, Megamind's first reaction is to say anything to tick him off just because he's that desperate for a fight. And yes, I know I've brought up that particular point in many other videos, but I will never understand how Megamind could have possibly thought that was a good idea and couldn't see what was right in front of him. Especially because throughout the movie, he's actually shown to be pretty smart. But I guess his desperation to relive the glory days clouded his judgment. But the point is, by doing that, he ends up unleashing Hal's vicious temper, which leads to his godlike powers going to his head and causing him to go on a rampage throughout the city. So once again, I'm not saying that Megamind is free of blame here. Because obviously, if he had picked up on any of the red flags Hal was giving off throughout the movie, things would have never gotten to that point. And as I just pointed out, because of that, he's also the one who ends up evoking his wrath that leads to him terrorizing the city. But the thing is, Hal still made the choice to become a supervillain. As I've pointed out in other videos, absolute power does corrupt absolutely. And Hal was definitely not one to be able to resist that much temptation. But it was still his choice. He didn't have to turn his back on superheroics the moment things didn't go his way. And he certainly didn't have to take out his newly found anger and lust for power on a completely innocent populace. All of that was entirely his choosing. As Megamind himself perfectly sums up, I made you a hero. You did the fool thing all by yourself. Which is to say, Megamind only trained Hal to be a hero. He was the one who decided he wasn't interested in any of it and wanted to be a bad guy instead. And that's another thing one has to keep in mind when assigning blame here is the intentions of the two characters. Now, as I went into in my Nightmare Before Christmas video, which you can find a link in the description to, 
what can heavily determine a person's sympathy towards somebody else, both in real life but more notably in fiction, is what they were thinking when they decided to do something. Because if they do something that ends up allowing somebody else to cause problems, but never meant for that to happen and only wanted to do good, then it can be kind of hard to argue that it makes them responsible for the whole thing. And to put it simply, both characters' intentions here were the complete opposite of the roles they were intended to play. Because Megamind only wanted to create a new hero to be able to fight and be defeated by. And he did everything he could to try and turn Hal into the perfect hero. The point is, he never planned on anybody getting hurt. If anything, he arguably wanted to do good by the city by giving them another hero to look up to and save them from harm. But Hal, meanwhile, appears to want to become a hero at first, but after Roxanne rejects him and Megamind stupidly awakens his temper, he decides he doesn't care about any of that anymore and is only going to use his powers for his own gain and abuse them for all they're worth. And once again, that is something he actively chooses to do. Other than making him angry, Megamind had absolutely no part in that, and it was certainly not what he wanted or expected from him. To put it another way, Megamind may have given him the means to become a supervillain, but that's never what he intended him to become or what he wanted to happen. His only goal with giving Hal superpowers was to do good by everybody, and it was Hal who screwed the whole thing up. And as I just noted, the most important thing about all of this to keep in mind is that it was Hal's choice to become a villain. Now I know I must have said that four or five times already, but that alone makes him directly responsible for everything he does as Titan. Because simply put, he was not forced to go on a rampage. He deliberately decided that's what he was going to do. And Megamind making him angry most definitely does not excuse a reaction like that. Especially because he decides to take it out on innocent people. Now, the thing is, sometimes I'm willing to sympathize with characters who have done questionable things, but there's simply no excusing Hal's behavior here. As I just said, Megamind making him angry is not an acceptable reason to start terrorizing an innocent town and potentially kill hundreds of people. Because honestly, Hal's rampage basically amounts to a giant temper tantrum in the face of limitless power, and he alone could decide if he wanted to embrace that or not. And when he does, he has nobody to blame for it but himself. Alright, so to put it all simply, though Megamind gave Hal superpowers, and therefore the means to create the level of chaos and mass destruction he later does, the responsibility for Titan's misdeeds falls squarely on the shoulders of Hal himself. Because once again, Megamind in no way encourages his bad behavior and even pretty much makes it his mission to stop him once he goes berserk because he feels guilty about it. And that honestly makes Megamind even less at fault for the whole thing because he actively takes responsibility for his role in what happened and puts an end to it himself. While Hal, meanwhile, made the choice of his own free will to use his powers for evil. And though it can be argued he never should have had them in the first place, that doesn't mean it's not his fault if he still succumbs to the temptation they present. And instead of admitting that he's the one who chose to do it, he blames everybody else for it, from Roxanne to Megamind and even the whole city, pretty much just because he can. 
and when Megamind calls him out on it, his first reaction is to get even angrier. So like I've already said, when you really look at it, Hal alone is to blame for what he did as Titan, as he was the one who chose to react to everything the way he did. Nobody else. Because again, while Megamind did have a hand in the whole thing, his good intentions, as well as actually taking responsibility for it, makes him a pretty innocent party in Titan's crimes. Now sure, Maybe for some people that still might not be enough, but I think few would argue that in the end, it was still Hal's choice, and right there pretty much makes him entirely responsible for his actions throughout the third act of the movie. Alright, I think that was everything I wanted to cover, so now I'd like you to tell me. Do you believe that Hal Stewart is solely to blame for his crimes throughout Megamind? Or do you believe that Megamind does deserve a share of the blame as well? And if so, how much blame do you think Megamind shares in addition to Titan? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And like always, you don't have to agree with any opinions expressed in this video if you don't want to. You are absolutely free to think anything you want, and I nor anybody else can tell you you're wrong. And thank you all for watching. It is all greatly appreciated, and I hope to see you all next time.